Thank you. Uh, to my dear translator, if I mess up, just make it sound good, please. I, uh, I don't often give talks in front of hundreds of people that can't understand my natural language, but I'm actually very excited for the opportunity for that, for that very reason. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles, and I had an incredibly supportive family. My parents gave me more love than I knew what to do with. We played outside in the park for, it seemed like, days on end. Um, they gave me all of the quality time that you need to develop a child. But we didn't have a lot of money. But for a while, I didn't know that because I didn't really understand the concept of money and I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. But when I was in middle school, we had a strict uniform dress code. And the only way you could differentiate yourself and stand out was by wearing nice kicks. And over time, I became obsessed with Nikes and Jordans and the like, but I couldn't afford them. And so for the first time in my life, I realized that I didn't have any money. And I realized that I kind of wanted some money. So what I started to do is I started to sell candy bars. Uh, and I, to I sold candy bars out of my backpack at recess and lunch. I could get a 30 pack at Costco for $12 and sell them for a dollar each. And so I made $18 a day, which isn't bad for a 14 year old. And after I did this for a few weeks, I was able to save enough money and I bought myself a pair of fresh Nike Air Force Ones. I was so proud of them. And the first day I wore them to school, someone came up to me and said, hey man, nice kicks. How much for them? I said, wow, if I can sell candy bars, maybe I can start selling shoes and make even more money. And so that's what I did for the next few years. I would wait in line for hours uh, when, shoe, when new shoe releases came out. I would stand in line, I'd get them. I would look, there are all these websites for shoe collectors where you can see the prices of what they're selling for. And I actually made, when I was about 14 years old, I made a really simple like stock market forecasting tool for shoes, if you will, in Excel. Um, and by the time I was 16, I had about 55 pairs of rare Nikes and Adidas in my closet. And I was in high school now, uh, and the strict dress code was, had gone by the wayside, and so we could wear whatever we wanted. And so I would match my swooshes to my shirts, and my laces to my hats, and my soles to my jackets, and man, I felt fresh. And one day, uh, after school, I was hanging out with some of my friends who were, you know, equally as fresh as I was, and we were hanging out on the corner, and out of nowhere, four cop cars converged on us. And they jumped out, guns drawn, and they screamed, get down on the ground or we'll shoot. And I was dumbfounded. I had no idea what was going on. As they were arresting us, as they were searching us from head to toe, I realized that when I saw my friend group as a group of young, scrappy entrepreneurs using our savvy and work ethic to get ahead and get what we wanted, they saw a group of hoodlums. And we were wearing, wearing matching clothes, which was a telltale sign of, that you're in a gang. And they told us that apparently somebody that was passing by said that there was some suspicious behavior going on in the corner. We were just laughing and joking around like typical teenagers. And as I lay on the concrete with the police officer's knee driving into my back, and as I felt the cold metal handcuffs tighten on my wrists, for the first time ever, I felt the effects of institutionalized racism. But I kept selling shoes, I kept doing me, um, and as I sold more and more shoes, I started to fall in love with math. I started to fall in love with the real world applications of math, which means when, if I knew when to buy shoes and when to sell shoes, it would translate into dollars in my pocket. And unfortunately, a lot of my friends and peers didn't develop that same love, didn't develop that same appreciation for math. Some of my best friends ended up dropping out of high school because they fell far behind in math. And when that happened, I was mad for a long time. I was mad at them for giving up. I was mad at myself for not doing more to help them. I was mad at our teachers. But I finally realized I was most mad at the fact that the system was not designed to make kids fall in love with math. And so I did the only thing that I thought I could do, you know, to, to kind of affect change in my small little corner of the universe. I started tutoring kids. One moment, please. Louder. Two mics. One, one talk, two mics. Uh, that'll be the title. Um, so I started tutoring kids, and 
Mark and Justin were two of my two T's, and they really struggled with math. And so I would incentivize them to do their math homework by going outside and playing basketball if you finish the work early. So one spring afternoon, we were playing a little game of 21, and Mark hits the game-winning shot, and he goes crazy. You know, he runs around the court, pretends to get interviewed by ESPN, and Justin, who's upset from losing, he turns to him and says, oh yeah, Mark, you weren't laughing and joking like that inside a few minutes ago when Khalil had to walk you through every homework problem. And Mark's face just lost all of its exuberance. In that moment, I knew that if we could bring the NBA into the learning equation, we could change the game. Growing up in Los Angeles when I did, the Lakers were life for us. And math was this thing that my friends felt they were force-fed from 10 to 10.50. The other 23 hours and 10 minutes of the day were all about the Lakers and all about Kobe Bryant. And I started to think, what if we could peel back one thin layer and expose all of the beautiful math that's in the game of basketball to my friends? So that's exactly what we do now. So I now run a nonprofit and we partnered directly with the NBA and made a fun math enrichment tool, a math program for elementary and middle school students that centered around a basketball board game called NBA Math Hoops. So with NBA Math Hoops, you draft a team of NBA and WNBA players, and then you go about what feels like a real basketball game. You know, you're, there's passing, shooting, rebounds, fouls, steals, the whole nine yards, and whether or not the ball goes in the hoop or not depends on the real world statistics of those NBA and WNBA players that you've drafted. So you have to pick your team wisely and there's a lot of strategy that comes into play around where you should take your shot from and when you should take a shot and should you take a two point shot or a three point shot. And so we're learning math, everything from addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, up to really advanced statistics with NBA math hoops. And the kids love it. The students absolutely love it because we've translated this thing that for most of them, most of their lives has been unaccessible uh, and something that they don't like and something they feel they're bad at. And now we're translating it into a language that they know and love. And it's incredibly powerful to see. And when you give students these fundamental math skills from a very young age and change the way they think about themselves as a math learner, you set them on a path towards boundless opportunity. I think the rapper said it, Drake said it best a few, like about a month ago, came out with an album called What a Time to Be Alive. And that really resonates with me because I think this is the most exciting time in history to be alive. The NBA season tipped off uh, earlier this week, actually. And for the first time ever, you could strap on a pair of goggles from your living room and experience a courtside view of the NBA game with virtual reality. This stuff is incredible. And fundamental math, is the key to all of it. STEM careers, science, technology, engineering, and math are not only the future, but they're very much the here and now as well. And unfortunately, many students, specifically low-income students of color, are not being adequately prepared to take advantage of that future. In the United States, 80% of low-income eighth graders are not proficient in math. 80%. And, draw, and failing a math class in middle school is one of the earliest indicators for dropping out of high school. And it's a statistic, but it's also a lived experience of some of my best friends. So with NBA Math Hoops, we've reached over 45,000 students across the US, and we've seen their math scores improve tremendously. So students' math scores actually improve on average 30% after using NBA Math Hoops. And a recent study just came out that showed that students who use NBA Math Hoops outperformed a control group by 300%, so 3x improvement. And it's not just raw math scores either. Um, with NBA Math Hoops, students are improving their teamwork and collaboration um, and all these 21st century learning skills that are incredibly vital as well. So the game is actually played two against two. So you're on someone's team. And we recently had a championship tournament where we brought together hundreds of students from California and the winner of that championship tournament was a pair of twin girls named Angela and Patricia. And they had a hard fought way to the finals. They had to go, they had played about 10 NBA Math Hoops games over the course of an afternoon. 
And when the clock finally hit zero and they were crowned the NBA Math Hoops champions of all of California, the joy on their face was uncontainable. It was incredible. And it was one of the proudest moments of my life. And now, if you ask Angela or Patricia what they think about themselves as a math student, they'll say, I'm a math champion, which is so incredibly powerful. We believe that the more math champions we can create, the more likely those kids are going to be to graduate, with high, graduate high school ready to pursue STEM careers and take the advanced classes necessary in college to get those degrees, and eventually they'll become the successful entrepreneurs and innovators of the future. I believe that the reason why those cops were so quick to draw their guns on me when I was a kid, and the reason why so many kids of color are receiving much worse treatment than that to this day, is because when they see us, they do not see the next Steve Jobs or Meg Whitman or Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. And I believe we have to change that. For the future of our world, the leaders of tomorrow need to be more diverse. Otherwise, we will continue on this horrible path of inequality. I believe that fundamental math skills are the earliest part of that funnel that eventually creates successful entrepreneurs and innovators. And so that's what I'm working and dedicating my life to, to improving. And uh, thank you so much for allowing me to share my story with you today. Appreciate it. Cool.